Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Um, I came across yesterday this article on the Times of Israel by Jessica Steinberg, who is one of their journalists. And uh, it just kind of caught my attention, and particularly one quote in it that I just thought was extraordinary and which I know is going to just like completely fly under the radar. Uh, but I think it's so telling and I think it's so typical of uh, the mindset of way too many people in Israel that just keeps this country so overpriced. Now, I have been living in Israel for seven years. I came here because as a Jew growing up in Ireland, I felt sort of out of place and that, you know, if we have a Jewish country, Israel is where we should be. So that was my reason. But, um, I, you know, I'm sure it might seem a bit odd to people when I criticize stuff, but I, I have um, for whoever whoever reads my online writing, uh, the, the my 414 medium followers at the time of recording this, but I've been very critical of the cost of living in Israel and I don't believe that it's sort of like unpatriotic or anti-Israel uh, to just kind of pretend that there aren't these problems here. And one of those problems, speaking of the cost of living, that really, really irritates me um, as somebody living here and working here and paying taxes to Israel and trying to live sort of a normal middle class lifestyle is just the fact that like it does not make sense to holiday in Israel for Israelis. It just is a waste of money. It's just like much better value to go to Turkey or to go to Greece or to go to Italy. Now that Ryanair's here and there's been like this, the open skies agreement, it, Israeli hotels are just not competitive. You get like lousy service for a high price tag in general. And this article just had this quote from one of the like, CEOs of the major hotel groups here that just said I can't believe he just said that like in black and white that's the attitude and I'm like when we when we sort of like try to investigate well why is Israel so expensive what's the deal with this kind of crazy high cost of living that according to a recent survey was the eighth highest in the world and people will say you know well it's a small country and uh, people have to pay for kosher certification the Rabbanut and etc 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 and i think that people fail to appreciate the extent to which greed and this kind of like uh, attitude that israeli hoteliers particularly deserve high prices and there's been articles like this uh coming out since the start of the pandemic saying that you know you'd expect under normal circumstances uh supply and demand israel being so dependent on international tourism that if that just was stopped that you would see a reduction in prices for hotel rates and Israelis uh, availing of the chance to stay in their small country. And I think that would be a tremendous thing. Israel is such a small country and I'm actually a huge fan of vacationing or staycationing as somebody who has a hard time getting into holiday mode and turning off from my work. Um, I love the idea of going down to Tel Aviv or somewhere else in Israel um, as opposed to going abroad. You don't need to fly anywhere. Um, you don't need to right now in COVID do, do all the COVID bureaucracy, all the PCR tests, but it still doesn't really make sense. And I think that's ridiculous. So yeah, there have been these articles coming out since the start of the pandemic about how miraculously, uh, despite COVID, the hotel rates are not diminishing. And I think this article does a good job at explaining why. So if you're some hotels, bad on local guests this season, but don't expect a bargain. What a surprise. Don't expect a bargain in Israel. Who would, who would have ever thought it? Giving up on foreign tourists for the approaching holiday season, high-end establishments seek to woo domestic tourists to spend their vacation shackles, but they don't want to lower their prices. So that to me is a strange dynamic. Um, now, I'll, I'll jump now to the quote that just really, I was like, hang on, that is ridiculous. Why would you, like, why, why would you say this um, to a news reporter? Like, that's, you know it's gonna be published in like an online newspaper and you know people are gonna read that. Like, Aren't you ashamed about this? Uh, we were fully booked for the holiday this year, said Avner Avne On, general manager of the Jerusalem Waldorf Astoria. When families come from abroad, and when they're talking about families and foreign tourism in Israel, we're mostly talking about like foreign Jews. We're talking here about the uh, Sukkot, the, um, which is one of the festivals in the Hagim, which is when uh, you know, uh, Jews are mandated to sit in booths. And it's, like a, it's a lovely holiday. And all the restaurants and hotels uh, put up their own Sukkot. Uh, for the festival and um, it's generally the way that it works in Israel when you're working here is that most people actually take the whole Hagim off because a lot of employers give you um, they have this like offer for their staff that if you holiday during Holomoed the intermediate days of Sukkot and the other festivals 
they will consider it they'll consider a or they'll count your time off as like only a half time it's a bit complicated as to like when they do it or when they have to do it but that's a common practice of companies that so you can take a week off and only use up three days of vacation so a lot of people just take the whole Hagim off um now uh, it says here own and his staff no longer believe those who go tourists will show up as corona virus delta variant cases soaring some of the bookings having cancelled quite yet but Owen is pretty sure they won't make it and this changes the scope of his most important seasons now in august the waldorf is full but with israeli tourists rather than the usual crowds of european and american visitors this situation is typical for israeli hotels this summer as most foreign tourists can't enter israel amid the pandemic nor will they likely be able to during the high holiday season in August, which is almost upon us. So the luxury hotel changed its rates and minimum lengths of stay for the holiday season, hoping that Israeli tourists will take advantage of the opportunity to spend part of the holiday at the Waldorf. The high-end hotel is now offering a two-night minimum and a 2,500 shekel, that's $772 at the time of writing, price tag per night, including breakfast, as well as reduced prices on meal. Everything is reduced to, the, I'm going to just highlight the quotes that, that kind of ticked me off. Everything is reduced to, to the level that the Israeli market can accommodate. So, and then he says, then it says like, as if it's like shameful, it's as if it would be like shameful to like offer a discount or admit that like it was good value. It's not cheap. Don't misunderstand me, but it's not as high as it was before. So like just this kind of whole idea that um, you have to reduce prices for just for like locals to be able to stay at your hotels is I don't know I find that kind of obnoxious um and then that like you, you'd like fall over yourself to like emphasize that like it's not cheap yeah 770 to 772 dollars per night is not cheap by the vast majority of people's standards in the world uh, but yeah it's just like this weird attitude of like where it would like kill these guys to reduce their prices or that that's kind of how you feel but there won't be any reduced prices at the nearby King David or the David Citadel. And these are two really fancy hotels, five-star hotels in Jerusalem. Now, here, here's the quote I take issue with. We're still not in desperate mode, said Ronen, Ronen Nissenbaum, CEO of the Dan Hotel. So the Dan is one of the big hotel chains in Israel. There's hotels, Dan hotels, I think, in most major cities. Um, so uh, Ronen Nissenbaum says, we're still not in desperate mode. We'd rather, but here, here it is. Here it is in black and white. I just, I can't believe you'd say this. We'd rather have fewer rooms at the right rate to make it feasible. Our strategy is to maintain the integrity. Ah, it's just jumped on me. Our strategy is to maintain the integrity of our rates to deliver amazing service and food even if it means our volume will be lower. So basically what this guy is saying is he would prefer to sell. He's acknowledging the fact that like because of COVID and the fact that foreign tourists who traditionally constitute a major amount of the hotel's uh, guests, he's acknowledging the fact that demand is down uh, for these hotel rooms. And you know, under normal circumstances, you think, well, they'd want to keep their hotel rooms occupied. And he is saying in black and white that they would rather actually have lower occupancy just so that they can keep these typically overpriced rates going rather than, it would, it would, it would like hurt them so much to reduce the rate. They talk about the integrity of a rates as if there's something like, as if there's some sort of a worthiness to uh, charging a bunch of money for hotel rooms. And I don't know, from my perspective, like, spending uh vacations in israel just doesn't make sense it's a ripoff so i i this mentality just drives me nuts and I, it's not just about hotels you, you'll see this i've seen this here with landlords who will let a uh, rental go unrented for seven months which means they're losing money every single month rather than reduce the rates probably for the same reason because they think we have to maintain the integrity of our rates uh we we couldn't reduce rates because there's less demand. We, we can't do that. We have to keep the prices in Israel really high. Now, I know I kind of seem just a bit angry, but it's just this attitude really bugs me, not just because I think it's obnoxious and I do, but because I think right now, what this article is highlighting um, is that there is sort of, we're at this sort of rare point in history in which we have this weird situation going on, this pandemic in which foreigners cannot come to Israel 
So the hotels are having to deal with an Israeli clientele. And look, I'm, I wouldn't stay in a hotel in Jerusalem. I live in Jerusalem. I like my place. I'm not trying to say I'd love to get a deal to stay in the Dan Hotel. I'm just saying what a short-sighted attitude that you would rather cling to your normal time rates and maintain the integrity. Like what on earth does that mean? He's, he's saying black and white. We'd rather have fewer rooms at the right rate to make it feasible. Our strategy is to maintain our integrity of our rate to deliver amazing service and food, even if it means our volume will be lower. What a, what a small-minded view that rather than sort of uh, seize this opportunity to offer actually decent, reasonably priced hotel accommodation to people living in Israel, to people spending their tax money and making the country succeed, it would kill you to lower your rates so much that you'd rather have less rooms booked and just wait for the foreign tourists to come back so you can, so you can go back to creaming them. It just disgusts me, this added. It really disgusts me. Um, another article just to support my case here from Ynet, Israel's hotels among most expensive in the world. So even though in Israel um, the sky is blue, sometimes you just have to Google articles or find evidence to, uh, to, so that you don't doubt yourself that the sky is indeed blue. Uh, this is just saying that um, there is a survey called the Hotel Price Index, and this is an old article from 2014, but I'd be very, very surprised if anything has changed I thought it was actually booking.com and they take their price survey um, and they find that basically Israel, just like our cost of living is the eighth highest in the world and the cost of real estate is the second highest in the world per square meter, just to add to the long list of um, statistics that kind of confirm that Israel is actually, for the most part, a gigantic ripoff. Uh, you have this article saying that Israel, Israel hotels are among the most expensive in the world and typically they do not offer uh, particularly good service in my opinion for their exorbitant rates and again you can say well it's because of the cost of workers here as if the minimum wage in Israel is super high it's not uh, it's the cost of kosher certification and I just wonder is this the answer this quote from one of the major CEOs of hotels nothing to do with rates it's due to the fact that they do not want to lower their rates because they know that they can charge foreign Jews exorbitant amounts of money just because uh, they know that they really want to come to Israel for Pesach where it's much easier for Pesach or for Sukkot or for any any religious hospital any any religious holiday and I just find that um, obnoxious uh, profiteering and the unwillingness to uh, be flexible when we have these market conditions I think is just really really appalling personally um, as well as that I think the fact that this guy like thought that was an okay thing, thing to just put out there to a journalist knowing it would be published, I think speaks volumes about the fact that these guys don't even see this attitude as problematic. And I think there's so many people like that in Israel. So uh, that was my rant uh, for the day. Uh, basically, um, I don't believe in um, holidaying in Israel because I think it's a ripoff. And I think that it makes more sense to go to other countries that do not have this growth culture of profiteering and exploitation. Um, so if I could, I would probably be booking a vacation uh, to Portugal or Turkey or Greece. Uh, but seeing as the borders are closed, it will probably be a couple more months at least before we can get out of Israel for a while.